Hi guys, Henry again uh, with my second sort of tutorial slash showcase video for uh, Europe Asunder the Seven Years War. I've already shown off the Blender files uh, elsewhere, but now I'd like to go over something which I think goes overlooked by a lot of my customers, and that is uh, my .lyt files, which are opened with Litchi Slicer. Now, uh, anyone who's used my Black Powder products before, by Black Powder I mean Black Port black powder era, so line battles and the like, uh, you'll have seen that my products come bundled with uh, strips. They can be four strips, uh, command strips, different um, different pre-configured strips of infantry, basically. Now, whereas you're used to seeing them, if you buy them from the web store as uh, single piece SDLs, each one is also accompanied with a .lyt file. .lyt uh, means light, a litchi light, a litchi slicer light file. And what makes those special is that they have a smaller file footprint because the 3D model is not saved as part of the file. And actually you'll notice that um, if you open one of these files first time after downloading, it will ask you to manually locate every model included in the file because it needs to know where they are so it can import them. So if you do get those error messages, uh, just do what it tells you uh, and you'll, you'll be fine. I'm going to import a custom strip now, a four strip of some British Lion Infantry, and I'm going to show you uh, what we can do um, do with, a, with this program. So here we go, I'm importing. What I've done here is I've imported a, a British Lion Infantry strip that has a drummer and an NCO. Now, uh, what you're looking at here, you can see everything is individually selectable. These haven't been merged into a single STL yet, that comes later and uh, they are standing on a base. This base I've created by clicking library up here and adding a cube. And then when the cube comes in, turn off, go to scale on the left here, turn off uniform scaling. I've already got it off, but you should click it, turn it off and just put in your, uh, your variables here. So this is 20 millimeters wide, five millimeters deep, one millimeter tall, which means it's tall enough to cover up the model's bases, which are underneath. These are just the individual models. Uh, what can you do with this file? Well, let's say you don't like how I do my strips, maybe for subjective reasons, or maybe because you're playing a different rule system. Uh, you can alter these. So let's imagine I'm doing some sort of speed painting technique where I paint the front of my models and I paint the back in two ranks deep. I've seen that's been a bit popular on the Facebook group right now. I could rescale this so it's 10 millimeters deep, right? Uh, then move the models forward. Click move here. I could either do it precisely with coordinates on the right, but my mathematics are so poor under pressure, I'm just going to do it this way. Move them until I see the front of the base and then edge them back in again. And then I can press, click on these two musketeers. Now, shift D is duplicate, but if I press alt shift and D, uh, two new models are added in in the same coordinates. And then I can take the two I already had selected and move them back. Move them back to their bases just to cut the back like that. And again, Alt Shift plus D because I've got two models selected, it will copy two models. Click one, give it the coordinates of minus 7.5 because this is a 20 millimeter wide base. Each side is 10 millimeters long. So 2.5, 7.5 is how we uh, evenly space them. And put positive 7.5 here. And now I have a, a two deep strip. If I don't like uh, the inclusion of a particular model, let's say you don't like how I've done my command strips, you can click on one of them. And on the top right here under object editor, you've got the path of a model. If you click that, that'll bring up a dialog box, a dialog box that you can't see right now. Sorry, that's just a limitation of my recording software. But I could replace this with a different model. So I'm gonna select a standard bearer from my uh, file browser and then click open. And the model is swapped with a different model now occupying the same coordinates. And then we have a custom strip. And if we click export, export object to 3D file, STL, again, another dialog box you can't see, uh, just type sample British two deep strip. I'll save that and then I'll open it up in a 3D builder. And there we go, there's my finished strip. And you'll notice if I click this, that because these were already uh, repaired files, these were already, you know, the STLs that are, let's say, um, release quality, uh, Nothing needs repairing. It's as simple as that. You just click export STL. And so you can make units to whatever specifications you want. 
So please, guys, I guess the, the takeaway from this is do not feel limited by the way I've configured the default STL strips. You've got the individual STLs bundled as well, and you can arrange them however you like, and I encourage you to do so. Uh, thanks for watching, and please uh, back the Kickstarter. It's coming out on the 9th of September if you're interested in the Seven Years War or the Lace Wars. I've already put out a Blender exporter showing some of the customization. I'm sorry, a video on the Blender exporter showing some of the customization options available. Uh, if that appeals to you or just this, uh, then please go for it. With the Litchi features, these always come with my STLs. So whether you buy the Kickstarter, uh, in which case you would only need the STL level to get the STLs and the the Litchi uh, files, or if you buy after release, uh, then you'll still get them. But I encourage you to buy pre-release because not only will they be cheaper, but you're also helping unlock the stretch goals. So please don't hold out. Anyway, take care and uh, thank you very much for watching.